a huge um, crowd today, but we will be taking this and sharing it with um, the other merchants so that uh, they know what's available to them. But um, uh, just to get started, um, I don't know if everyone saw the article in today's uh, paper. Is it today? Yeah. Uh, in today's paper regarding the ordinance um, that the city is putting before city council to allow for uh, outdoor retailing. Um, this is sort of a follow-up to the work that was done for restaurants, uh, realizing that with uh, limited capacity these days, um, that for small businesses, uh, we think it's critical to at least allow the opportunity to expand outside of um, your, your footprint um, to um, hopefully increase sales and, and visibility. So we have Cindy McCormick um, from the city. Hello, Cindy. Uh, that is going to <laughs> walk everyone through the uh, through the ordinance, and um, we'll be available to answer any questions. So it's um, so again, um, I think it goes to city council again tomorrow, um, and to go into effect the twenty fourth. Is that right, Cindy? It's the 28th, the meeting. So there would be a first reading uh, tomorrow at the first city council meeting, and then there needs to be a second reading. Um, and then if they were to approve it, that would be um, done on the 28th. Great. Great. So I will turn it over to Cindy. Um, just as a reminder, we are recording. And um, if you have any questions um, during the presentation, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, but we don't have a lot of people, so I think um, at the end we can just open it up for uh, a discussion if need be. So, Cindy, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thanks, Marshall. Um, my name is Cindy McCormick. I'm uh, one of the deputy directors of Public Works, and um, I've been working with um, Barry Handwerger, who is the, uh, the city solicitor in um, he developed this ordinance and then I'm also um, helping with writing the rules and regulations and getting um, a licensing process um, in place for this ordinance. But as Marshall mentioned, the ordinance is basically to um, provide similar opportunities for retail businesses to um, place their wares outside in the, in the public right of way or in public space um, that you currently um, cannot generally use for um, selling merchandise. So, um, Jeremy, if we go to the next slide. So the, like I said, the primary purpose is to allow us to designate public areas for displaying of the retail goods. Um, and then, as I mentioned, um, getting sort of a process in place to allow you to, um, you know, um, we have a permit that you would be required to fill out um, related to that and we would review it um, in public works and then you know you could have that opportunity um, and then it also establishes the rules and regulations um, in using those areas so the ordinance has certain provisions within it but then the rules and regulations go into more detail as far as what is allowed and not allowed um, and just so you're aware we're still obviously the ordinance has been presented but we are still um, working on the rules and regulations. So if there's anything that people feel is really onerous that, you know, we still have some flexibility maybe to change some of those um, prior to the, the um, adoption of the ordinance. So the next slide. So um, some of the key um, points related to the ordinance is that it allows um, this, this can be used in any district within the um, city and there is no specific like zoning hearing board approvals or any kind of approvals that are needed. This is, it is temporary. So um, the ordinance applies until the end of the year, um, similar to the sidewalk cafe ordinance. So that um, extends to the end of uh, 2020. There are no fees associated with the permit. And um, as I mentioned, we are developing of application process. It's a pretty straightforward application and we do have um, inspectors that would come out and help identify where you could and couldn't put things, um, help with sketches and filling out the application. So we want to make it as streamlined as possible. Um, and as we mentioned, the, the ordinance would be, would go into effect 
July 28th. So the rules and regulations would just cover some of the details, as I mentioned, of what would be allowed, um, what, you know, how much space, the, the primary thing that we want to, um, when we talk about the public space, that could be sidewalks in front of your business. Um, it could even be um, a parking space. You know, we are looking at even allowing parking spaces to be used. Um, and if there is enough interest, we would even allow street closures. But the primary thing related to sidewalks is that we wanna make sure we're maintaining um, a six foot wide pedestrian path. Um, you know, this is a, a minimum that we need. Um, and then it's especially important related to social distancing and, and that kind of thing. So we, that's the main um, thing that the inspectors would be looking for when they came out. Um, so then, you know, based on maintaining that minimum pedestrian path, we could determine, you know, based on any tables or display cases that you have, um, what could be accommodated within the right of way. Um, and then obviously there's still, we wanna make sure that the, you know, proper sanitizing and that kind of thing is happening. So that would be covered in the rules and regulations. Um, some of the things that we've identified to date that we would uh, want, that we're including in the regulations include the hours of operation. We would want those to match um, what your current retail establishment hours are. And that, you know, the merchandise could be displayed in the sidewalk, but we would be looking for transactions to occur inside the establishment. Um, again, just to make sure there's not too much activity um, on the sidewalk uh, where we would be blocking um, pedestrian access. to the next slide. So, and this was just sort of, you know, what we used in the, um, as examples for the sidewalk cafe um, ordinance, but this sort of applies to the retail as well in that, you know, this diagram's just sort of showing where the spaces could be used. We're obviously in the middle of the sidewalk wanting to maintain that pedestrian access. Um, there's, you know, areas of opportunity um, in parking spaces. Um, and so there's just different um, things that we want to make sure that we're accommodating related to this. Go to the next slide. So here's just an example of if you were, you know, displaying merchandise on the sidewalk area, um, you know, um, adjacent to your establishment. Um, part of the rules and regulations also allow you to extend beyond your um, building frontage if you get the, the permission of your, the adjacent property owners. We, we would just need an email or some kind of written um, notification that you have permission to use that space in front outside of your uh, building frontage. Uh, the next slide, please. So there are um, a couple parklets that have been um, put up for dining um, on uh, East King Street. There's uh, Barbara Ray has a parklet. Um, so this is also, you know, something that could be done related to retail. There are a couple um, things that go along with that that make it a little bit more costly, but we have seen that there are businesses willing to sponsor some of these things. Um, that includes rental of the park, if it's a metered parking space, um, that would, um, the parking authority is renting those spaces for $10 a day. Um, so that would be an added cost. But again, there are some businesses that have been uh, stepping up to sponsor some of those costs. The other part of a parklet would require that um, there's some kind of traffic rated barrier, um, particularly if you're, you know, an area, if it's an area directly adjacent to a travel lane. So we wanna make sure that there is some kind of sturdy separation between uh, the retail area and the travel lane. So um, some traffic rated barriers, uh, as you, you, I don't know if you've noticed at the Barbera, but they use the orange uh, construction barriers uh, to provide that separation. So that's something that we would be looking for. And there have been, again, some construction companies that have been willing to donate those types of barriers to businesses as well. And then the next slide. 
Um, so this is just sort of detailing uh, some of the information that I just went over related to the parking authority, um, the $10 a day uh, meter rental. Um, the one thing I would say is that if we are using some of those traffic rated barriers, they're maybe not as easily um, moved back and forth. So um, it may be more of a permanent or, you know, a semi-permanent type thing. Um, but, you know, there is the opportunity to rent, I guess, as needed, the space. But you just have to keep in mind that it, moving those barriers could be a, a cumbersome process. Um, next slide, please. So then the, the final option is, you know, street closures or even block closures. Um, you know, we have, as far as, um, we have provided some public dining um, along Market Street by closing part of the street. There is the opportunity to do that for retail as well, if there is enough of an interest um, in, in providing space. I think these would be maybe not as permanent as the Market Street. Um, uh, dining is right now, but there, you know, um, any kind of coordinated efforts to close uh, streets or parts of streets is, you know, something that we're definitely willing to consider. And it would be on sort of a case-by-case -case basis. You know, you could um, present an idea to us and we could see if that is something that we could work out as far as closing part of the street or um, an entire street for a period of time. Obviously, you know, any coordination if it's a if it's a block or an area that has a lot of retail, we'd love to see um, efforts to coordinate that, um, you know, before you come to the city, just so that it's uh, something that's, uh, you know, we that we know we have the support of of the people adjacent to the areas in implementing something like that. Uh, next slide, please. So that's just some of the basics. Um, related to what, you know, we envision how this could be used. Um, and, you know, I, I think part of this as well is to welcome any feedback that you have um, related to questions or concerns, or if there's been any fine tuning of this um, ordinance, or maybe not necessarily the ordinance, but the rules and regulations that we could incorporate um, prior to this being adopted. I don't know if there's anything else, Marshall or Jeremy or if anyone else wanted to add as well. Penny, so what is the application process? Um, it's gonna be uh, similar to the Sidewalk Cafe. It's just a basically a one, one pager that, you know, lists out your information, the area that you're looking to um, use. Um, and we do need a sketch of what you're proposing so that we make sure that everything's laying out correctly as far as size of the tables that you have versus the size of the sidewalk and that kind of thing. But, um, but we do have inspectors that can help with that process as well. Um, it will be a matter of just, um, we do have, we will have the application available online so that you can um, just fill that out and then email it to um, engineering uh, at the city of LancasterPA.com and um, usually within a day, we can have an inspector out there. And, you know, we would hope that within two or three days, we could issue a permit. Right. Well, I think if anyone has any questions, I don't think we need to um, worry about the chat room. Uh, <laughs> maybe just um, ask. I have a question. Uh, if, if you have neighbors that are not um, happy with you doing or putting in a request to do a sidewalk extension. Uh, does that mean that you automatically get denied or is there a way to work with them or would that be on a case by case basis? Um, yeah, it would definitely be on a case by case basis. Um, I mean, if, if it's a, you know, where they're just not interested in entertaining, um, yeah, I guess we would have to talk about that to see what the options were for you. But we would prefer, I mean, it would make the process easier if we could get some kind of okay from the adjacent property owners. Right. Judy, do you mean if you wanted to expand it in front of someone else's property or if someone- no, I mean, if it was expanded in front of your own and they said, you know, it's 
kind of blocking what um, we're, we're just not happy with it. We're not happy with the extra traffic or the noise or there's trash out here or whatever. No, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, for us, the permission is if you're extending it beyond your frontage, your building frontage, so. Um, not that I would anticipate any of that. I'm just asking just as a uh, kind of just in case. Right, but the, yeah, the process right now is that if you're uh, keeping it contained within your building frontage or, you know, your storefront frontage, then no other permission is needed. Okay. And also, is there any um, uh, thoughts of maybe doing um, like a day or two, especially during the holidays where feet would be waived if you wanted to um, expand into your parking space just for the the day or the evening, you know, any kind of special ongoing types of things that are they're thinking of? Um, there haven't been any identified at this point. It's not to say that, you know, it, that couldn't happen. I mean, around the holidays, the parking is, you know, waived regardless, so. Right. Is that the time frame you were thinking or is there other time? Yeah. Around the holidays, if there's some way we could, um, encourage everyone in the block to kind of take advantage of that and maybe waive the fees or whatever there right. would be that evening or that day. Right, and the fee only applies if, you know, the parking is applying, you know, if it would be a standard meter day, you know, either way. So um, you don't pay the fee for Sundays or, yeah, if it were a time that would typically be waived anyway, that would definitely, they wouldn't be charging for that. Okay. Yeah, Judy, I think if there's an entire block that was interested in doing something like that as a special occasion that we would be happy to work with that block and the city and the parking authority to see what could be what could be worked out. Okay, absolutely. And Cindy, so does the business owner need the permission of the property owner to do this in front of the business in front of the building? We haven't been necessarily requiring that of every of each application um it depends i guess on the situation any other questions I guess I had a, is there a general interest in this or um, is it something that you think that you would take advantage of? I would, I would definitely take advantage of it. I think it might help with, uh, especially as we get into the fall months where things tend to be a little more crowded anyway, it might help with, um, uh, like, the limit to um, when you have to limit the number of people that are in your shop uh, it might help if they're outside and then you can kind of control your crowd control sort of for lack of a better term. Right. right. And people might be more comfortable outside. Hmm. Yeah, and Cindy, just so you know, the we are going to send this um, out to other, like to, to the entire retail um, um, group too. So you may be still bombarded with questions and. No, that's okay. Hope, hopefully interest. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Right. If not, this is a it's a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we can get um, we can send to you, Marshall, the draft rules and regulations and the draft permit, so that everybody has that. And you know, if they have any questions or anything, they can reach out. Um, everything wouldn't be final until the the twenty eighth when it is adopted by council, but at least you'd have a, a good feel for where things were headed. Great. Excellent. All right. Well, with that, everyone, I'll say thank you for us or, um, for Cindy 
and um, we'll make sure that it gets answered. Other than that, thanks for taking some time to join us today. Much appreciated. Marshall. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.